Afrocentrism also Afrocentricity is an approach to the study of world history that focuses on the history of people of recent African descent. It is in some respects a response to global Eurocentric attitudes about African people and their historical contributions. It seeks to correct mistakes and ideas perpetuated by the racist philosophical underpinnings of Western academic disciplines as they developed during and since Europe's early Renaissance as justifying rationales for the enslavement of other peoples, in order to enable more accurate accounts of not only African but all peoples' contributions to world history. Afrocentricity deals primarily with self-determination and African agency and is a pan-African point of view for the study of culture, philosophy, and history. Afrocentrism is a scholarly movement that seeks to conduct research and education on global history subjects, from the perspective of historical African peoples and polities. It takes a critical stance on Eurocentric assumptions and myths about world history, in order to pursue methodological studies of the latter. Some of the critics of the movement believe that it often denies or minimizes European, Near Eastern and Asian cultural influences while exaggerating certain aspects of historical African civilizations that independently accomplished a significant level of cultural and technological development. In general, Afrocentrism is usually manifested in a focus on the history of Africa and its role in contemporary African-American culture and Greek philosophy among others. What is today broadly called Afrocentrism evolved out of the work of African-American intellectuals in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, but flowered into its modern form due to the activism of African-American intellectuals in the U.S. civil rights movement and in the development of African-American studies programs in universities. However, following the development of universities in African colonies in the 1950s, African scholars became major contributors to African historiography. A notable pioneer is the professor Kenneth Dyke of the University of Ibadan, who became chairman of the Committee on African Studies at Harvard in the 1970s. In strict terms Afrocentrism, as a distinct historiography, reached its peak in the 1980s and 1990s. Today it is primarily associated with Sheikh Anta Diop, John Henrik Clark, Ivan Van Sertima and Malefi Asante. Sheikh Anta Diop is the primary source of African centered academic literature. The methodology of his research on the Nubian origins of Egyptian civilization earned him authorship of a chapter in UNESCO's General History of Africa manual, called Origin of the Ancient Egyptians. Proponents of Afrocentrism support the claim that the contributions of various black African people have been downplayed or discredited as part of the legacy of colonialism and slavery's pathology of writing Africans out of history. Major critics of Afrocentricity including Mary Lefkowitz, dismiss it as pseudohistory, reactive, and obstinately therapeutic. Others, such as Kwame Anthony Appiah believe the Afrocentricity defeats its purpose of dismantling unipolar studies of word history by seeking to replace Eurocentricity with an equally ethnocentric and hierarchical curriculum, and negatively essentializes European culture and people of European descent. Topic. Terminology The term, Afrocentrism, dates to 1962. The adjective, Afrocentric, appears in a typescript proposal for an entry in Encyclopedia Africana, possibly due to W. E. B. Du Bois. The abstract noun, Afrocentricity, dates to the 1970s, and was popularized by Malefi Asante's Afrocentricity, The Theory of Social Change 1980. Afrocentrists led by Malefi Asante have organized their critics into three categories, capitulationists, Europeanized loyalists, and maskers. Capitulationists condemn Afrocentricity because they are uncomfortable with themselves and do not believe that Africans should be considered agents. They include amongst black scholars Anthony Appia and Stanley Crouch. The functioning element for these critics is self-hatred, accompanied by the belief that these African critics are really nothing but whites in black skin. Their rejection of Afrocentricity is tied to their rejection of themselves. Europeanized loyalists include many Marxists and integrationists such as Mary Lefkowitz, Stanley Crouch, and Wilson Moses staunch critics of Afrocentricity, who believe that blacks can do no good. These critics are strangers to the Afrocentric idea because they have immersed themselves in alien canon of knowledge without knowing African history. The last type, the maskers, are the critics who are ashamed of Afrocentricity and therefore do all they can to conceal their identities. Their tragedy is that they seek to please the master so they attack Afrocentrists to prove to whites that they are like them. 
They fear that they may lose their careers. History Afrocentrism has its origins in the work of African and African diaspora intellectuals in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, following social changes in the United States and Africa due both to the end of slavery and the decline of colonialism. Following the American Civil War, African Americans in the South gathered together in communities to evade white control, established their own church congregations, and worked hard to gain education. They increasingly took more active public roles despite severe racial discrimination and segregation. American and African intellectuals looked to the African past for a re-evaluation of what its civilizations had achieved and what they meant for contemporary people. The combination of the European centuries gives us about four to five hundred years of solid European domination of intellectual concepts and philosophical ideas. Africa and Asia were subsumed under various headings of the European hierarchy. If a war between the European powers occurred it was called a world war and the Asians and Africans found their way on the side of one European power or the other, there was this sense of assertiveness about European culture that advanced with Europe's trade, religious, and military forces. As an ideology and political movement, Afrocentrism had its beginnings in activism among black intellectuals, political figures, and historians in the context of the U.S. American Civil Rights Movement. According to U.S. professor Victor Ogegiofor Okafor, concepts of Afrocentricity lie at the core of disciplines such as African American studies. But Wilson J. Moses claims that Afrocentrism roots are not exclusively African. Despite the fulminations of ethno-chauvinists and other prejudiced persons, it remains a fact that the contributions of white scholars, like Boas, Malinowski, and Herskovitz, were fundamental to that complex of ideas that we designate today's as Afrocentrism. Students of African and African American history have long appreciated the irony that much of what we now call Afrocentrism was developed during the 1930s by the Jewish-American scholar Melville Herskovitz. In 1987, Martin Bernal published his Black Athena, in which he claims that ancient Greece was colonized by northern invaders mixing with a colony established by Phoenicia modern Lebanon. A major theme of the work is the alleged denial by Western academia of the African and Western Asiatic influence on ancient Greek culture. Aspects Afrocentricity book In 2000, Malefi Keat Asante, chair of the Department of African American Studies at Temple University gave a lecture at the University of Liverpool entitled, Afrocentricity, Toward a New Understanding of African Thought in This Millennium, in which he presented many of his ideas. Africa has been betrayed by international commerce, by missionaries and imams, by the structure of knowledge imposed by the Western world, by its own leaders, and by the ignorance of its own people of its past. Philosophy originated in Africa and the first philosophers in the world were Africans. Afrocentricity constitutes a new way of examining data, and a novel orientation to data, it carries with it assumptions about the current state of the African world. His aim is to help lay out a plan for the recovery of African place, respectability, accountability, and leadership." Afrocentricity can stand its ground among any ideology or religion, Marxism, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, or Judaism. Your Afrocentricity will emerge in the presence of these other ideologies because it is from you. Afrocentrism is the only ideology that can liberate African people, Asante also stated, as a cultural configuration, the Afrocentric idea is distinguished by five characteristics. An intense interest in psychological location as determined by symbols, motifs, rituals, and signs. A commitment to finding the subject place of Africans in any social, political, economic, or religious phenomenon with implications for questions of sex, gender, and class. A defense of African cultural elements as historically valid in the context of art, music, and literature. A celebration of centeredness and agency and a commitment to lexical refinement that eliminates pejoratives about Africans or other people. A powerful imperative from historical sources to revise the collective text of African people. However, Wilson J. Moses, said of Asante, 
His second book, The Afrocentric Idea (1987), was a creative and in some respects brilliant but rambling theoretical work, much influenced by the revolution in critical theory that occurred in American intellectual life during the late 1970s and early 1980s. Some also assert that the definition of Afrocentricity has never sat still long enough to be properly described and accurately critiqued. Topic: <laughs> Afrocentric education. Afrocentric education is education designed to empower peoples of the African diaspora. A central premise behind it is that many Africans have been subjugated by limiting their awareness of themselves and indoctrinating them with ideas that work against them. To control a people's culture is to control their tools of self-determination in relationship to others. Like educational leaders of other cultures, proponents assert that what educates one group of people does not necessarily educate and empower another group so they assert educational priorities distinctly for the Africans in a given context. Afrocentric theology The black church in the United States developed out of the creolization of African spirituality and European American Christianity. Early members of the churches made certain stories their own. During the antebellum years, the idea of deliverance out of slavery, as in the story of Exodus, was especially important. After Reconstruction and the restoration of white supremacy, their hope was based on deliverance from segregation and other abuses. They found much to respond to in the idea of a personal relationship with Jesus, and shaped their churches by the growth of music and worship styles that related to African as well as European American traditions. 20th century, Afrocentric approaches to Christian theology and preaching have been more deliberate. Writers and thinkers emphasize black presence in the Christian Bible, including the idea of a black Jesus. <inaudible> Kwanzaa In 1966 Maulana Karenga of the U.S. organization created Kwanzaa as the first specifically African-American holiday. Karenga said his goal was to give blacks an alternative to the existing holiday and give blacks an opportunity to celebrate themselves and history, rather than simply imitate the practice of the dominant society. <laughs> Race and Pan-African identity Many Afrocentrists seek to challenge concepts such as white privilege, color-blind perspectives, and race-neutral pedagogies. There are strong ties between Afrocentricity and critical race theory. Afrocentrists agree with the current scientific consensus that holds that Africans exhibit a range of types and physical characteristics, and that such elements as wavy hair or aquiline facial features are part of a continuum of African types that do not depend on admixture with Caucasian groups. They cite work by Hirno and Hassan that they believe demonstrates that populations could vary based on micro-evolutionary principles climate adaptation, drift, selection, and that such variations existed in both living and fossil Africans. Afrocentrists have condemned what they consider to be attempts at dividing African peoples into racial clusters as new versions of discredited theories, such as the Hamitic hypothesis and the dynastic race theory. These theories, they contend, attempted to identify certain African ethnicities, such as Nubians, Ethiopians and Somalis, as Caucasoid groups that entered Africa to bring civilization to the natives. They believe that Western academics have traditionally limited the peoples they defined as Black Africans to those south of the Sahara, but used broader Caucasoid or related categories to classify peoples of Egypt or North Africa. Afrocentrists also believe strongly in the work of certain anthropologists who have suggested that there is little evidence to support that the first North African populations were closely related to Caucasoids of Europe and Western Asia. In 1964, Afrocentric scholar Sheikh Anta Diop expressed a belief in such a double standard. But it is only the most gratuitous theory that considers the Dinka, the Noer, and the Maasai, among others, to be Caucasoids. What if an African ethnologist were to persist in recognizing as white only the blonde, blue-eyed Scandinavians, and systematically refused membership to the remaining Europeans, and Mediterraneans in particular—the French, Italians, Greek, Spanish, and Portuguese? 
Just as the inhabitants of Scandinavia and the Mediterranean countries must be considered as two extreme poles of the same anthropological reality, so should the Negroes of East and West Africa be considered as the two extremes in the reality of the Negro world. To say that a Shiluk, a Dinka, or a Noer is a Caucasoid is for an African as devoid of sense and scientific interest as would be, to a European, an attitude that maintained that a Greek or a Latin were not of the same race. French historian Jean Vicouter has claimed that archaeological workers routinely classified Negroid remains as Mediterranean, even though they found such remains in substantial numbers with ancient artifacts. Some Afrocentrists have adopted a pan Africanist perspective that people of color are all African people or diasporic Africans, citing physical characteristics they exhibit in common with black Africans. Afrocentric scholar Renoko Rashidi writes that they are all part of the global African community. Some Afrocentric writers include in the African diaspora the Dravidians of India, Negritos, of Southeast Asia Thailand, the Philippines and Malaysia, and the Aboriginal peoples of Australia and Melanesia. A few Afrocentrists claim that the Olmecs of Mexico were a hybrid society of Native American peoples and Africans. Mainstream historians of Mesoamerica overwhelmingly reject that view with detailed rebuttals. Topic: Pre-Columbian Africa Americas theories. In the 1970s, Ivan Van Sertima advanced the theory that the complex civilizations of the Americas were the result of trans-oceanic influence from the Egyptians or other African civilizations. Such a claim is his primary thesis in They Came Before Columbus, published in 1978. The few hyper-diffusionist writers seek to establish that the Olmec people, who built the first highly complex civilization in Mesoamerica and are considered by some to be the mother civilization for all other civilizations of Mesoamerica, were deeply influenced by Africans. Van Sertima said that the Olmec civilization was a hybrid one of Africans and Native Americans. His theory of pre-Columbian American-African contact has since met with considerable and detailed opposition by scholars of Mesoamerica. Van Sertima has been accused of doctoring and twisting data to fit his conclusions, inventing evidence, and ignoring the work of respected Central and South American scholars in the advance of his own theory. <laughs> Afrocentrism and ancient Egypt Several Afrocentrists have claimed that important cultural characteristics of ancient Egypt were indigenous to Africa and that these features were present in other early African civilizations such as the later Kerma and the Meroitic civilizations of Nubia. Scholars who have held this view include Marcus Garvey, George James, Sheikh Anta Diop, Martin Bernal, Ivan Van Sertima, John Henrik Clark, Chancellor Williams, and Malefi Keita Sandi. The claim has also been made by many Afrocentric scholars that the ancient Egyptians themselves were Black African, Sub-Saharan African, rather than North African, Maghrebi, and that the various invasions on Egypt resulted in the Africanity of ancient Egypt becoming diluted, resulting in the modern diversity seen today. Scholars have challenged the various assertions of Afrocentrists on the cultural and biological characteristics of ancient Egyptian civilization and its people. At a UNESCO symposium in the 1970s, the vast majority of the delegates repudiated the Afrocentric assertions. Zahi Hawass has gone on record as saying that the ancient Egyptians were not black and ancient Egypt was not a black African civilization. Despite contestations, UNESCO decided to include his origin of the ancient Egyptians in the general history of Africa, with an editorial comment mentioning the disagreement. It should also be noted that the ancient world did not employ racial categories such as black or white, as they had no conception of race, but rather labeled groups according to their land of origin and cultural traits. However, Soy Keita, a biological anthropologist studying the controversy, finds simplistic political appellations in the negative or affirmative describing ancient populations as black or white to be inaccurate and instead focuses on the ancestry of ancient Egypt as being a part of the native and diverse biological variation of Africa, which includes a variety of phenotypes and skin gradients. 
Responding to Hawass' assertion in the press that Egyptians were not black or that Egypt was not an African civilization, Keita claims that Hawass' statement obscures the reality of research in the Nile Valley that paints a very complex picture and that most people familiar with this research would not get up in front of a group to make such a claim so openly. <laughs> Hamitic hypothesis Stephen Howe summarizes the development of the Hamitic hypothesis in the 19th and 20th centuries as Eurocentric. He further describes how some Afrocentric writers adopted their version of it. Howe distinguishes three clusters of controversies related to the history of ancient Egypt. About the third cluster he says that these are controversies that have been especially salient in relation to the United States, have interacted heavily with sensitive issues of current public policy, and involve questions both wide and fundamentally about the United States. Criticism <coughs> 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 Within Afrocentrism, claims were forwarded involving the contention that African civilizations were founding influences on such distant civilizations as the American Olmec and the Chinese Shah cultures. Yaakov Shavit, a critic of the movement, summarizes its goals in the preface to his book History in Black, in which he states, Thus, if historical myths and legends, or an invented history, play such a major role in the founding of every national reconstruction, the question that should concern us here is the nature of the distinct style in which black Americans imagine their past. The answer to this question is that radical Afrocentrism, the subject of this study, which plays a central role in shaping the modern historical world view of a large section of the African American or Afro American community, is far more than an effort to follow the line taken by many ethnic groups and nations in modern rewriting, inventing or developing collective identity and national history. Rather, it is a large scale historical project to rewrite the history of the whole of humankind from an Afrocentric point of view. The result is a new reconstruction of world history, it is a universal history. Other critics contend that some Afrocentric historical research is grounded in identity politics and myth rather than scholarship. In the Skeptics Dictionary, philosophy professor Robert Todd Carroll labeled Afrocentrism, pseudo-historical. He argued that Afrocentrism's prime goal was to encourage black nationalism and ethnic pride in order to effectively combat the destructive consequences of cultural and universal racism. Similarly, African-American professor Clarence E. Walker who teaches history at the University of California, Davis, has described Afrocentrism as a mythology that is racist, reactionary, essentially therapeutic and as Eurocentrism in blackface. Mary Lefkowitz, professor emerita of classical studies at Wellesley College in Massachusetts, has rejected George James's theories about Egyptian contributions to Greek civilization as being faulty scholarship. She notes that he used sources that predated the deciphering of Egyptian hieroglyphs. He failed to acknowledge that many of his theories were overturned by the evidence of later findings. She contends that ancient Egyptian texts show little similarity to Greek philosophy. Lefkowitz also pointed out that Aristotle could not have stolen his ideas from the Great Library at Alexandria as James suggested, because the library was founded after Aristotle's death. Because of such fundamental errors of fact, Lefkowitz has criticized Afrocentrism as an excuse to teach myth as history. In 1994 the Manhattan Institute, a public policy forum, published Alternatives to Afrocentrism, a collection of highly critical essays by, among others, Lefkowitz, Gerald Early, Stanley Crouch, Wilson Moses, and Frank Yurko. Early, an African American, has been especially critical and dismisses Afrocentrism as just another North American experiment in group therapy, a kind of intellectual fast food. In 2002 Ibrahim Sundiata noted in the American Historical Review that the word Afrocentric has been traced by Derek Allridge to the American historian W.E.B. Du Bois, who employed it in the early 1960s. During the 1970s, Malefi Keita Sani appropriated the term, insisting that he was the only person equipped to define it, and asserting that even the holy archangels Du Bois and Sheikh Anta Diop had an imperfect and immature grasp of a concept that finds ultimate expression in his own pontifications. Subsequently, it became a catch-all, floating signifier, nebulous, unstable, and infinitely mutable.
Kane Hope Felder, a professor of New Testament language and literature at Howard University and supporter of Afrocentric ideas, has warned Afrocentrists to avoid certain pitfalls, including demonizing categorically all white people, without careful differentiation between persons of good will and those who consciously perpetuate racism. Adopting multiculturalism as a curricular alternative that eliminates, marginalizes, or vilifies European heritage to the point that Europe epitomizes all the evil in the world. Gross overgeneralizations and using factually or incorrect material as bad history and bad scholarship. Nathan Glazer writes that although Afrocentricity can mean many things, the popular press has generally given most attention to its most outlandish theories. Glazer agrees with many of the findings and conclusions presented in Lefkowitz's book Not Out of Africa. Yet he also argues that Afrocentrism often presents legitimate and relevant scholarship. The late Manning Marable was also a critic of Afrocentrism. He wrote, Populist Afrocentrism was the perfect social theory for the upwardly mobile black petty bourgeoisie. It gave them a sense of ethnic superiority and cultural originality, without requiring the hard, critical study of historical realities. It provided a philosophical blueprint to avoid concrete struggle within the real world. It was, in short, only the latest theoretical construct of a politics of racial identity, a world view designed to discuss the world but never really to change it. Some Afrocentrists agree in rejecting those works which critics have characterized as examples of bad scholarship. Adisa A. Alkebulin notes that the work of Afrocentric scholars is not fully appreciated because critics use the claims of a few non-Afrocentrists as an indictment against Afrocentricity. In 1996 the historian August Meyer critically reviewed the new work of Mary Lefkowitz on Afrocentrism as Eurocentric. He criticized her book Not Out of Africa, how Afrocentrism became an excuse to teach myth as history for what he saw as her neglect of the African-American historic literature of the 19th and 20th centuries. Meyer believes she fails to take the African-American experiences into account, to the extent that she fails to answer the question raised in this book's subtitle. Magan Keita describes the controversy over Afrocentrism as a cultural war. He believes certain epistemologies are warring with each other, the epistemology of blackness argues for the responsibilities and potential of black peoples to function in and contribute to the progress of civilization. Topic list of prominent authors Marimba Ani, professor, author and activist, Urugu, an African-centered critique of European cultural thought and behavior Trenton, Africa World Press, 1994. Malefi Keat Asante, professor, author, Afrocentricity, The Theory of Social Change, The Afrocentric Idea, The Egyptian Philosophers, Ancient African Voices from Emotep to Akhenaten Jacob Carruthers, Egyptologist, founding director of the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilization, founder and director of the Kemetic Institute, Chicago Sheikh Anta Diop, author, The African Origin of Civilization, Myth or Reality, Civilization or Barbarism, An Authentic Anthropology, Precolonial Black Africa, The Cultural Unity of Black Africa, The Domains of Patriarchy and of Matriarchy in Classical Antiquity, The Peopling of Ancient Egypt and the Deciphering of the Meroitic Script Yosef Ben Jochanan, Author, African Origins of Major Western Religions, Black Man of the Nile and His Family, Africa, Mother of Western Civilization, New Dimensions in African History, The Myth of Exodus and Genesis and the Exclusion of Their African Origins, Africa, Mother of Western Civilization, Abu Simbel to Giza, A Guide Book and Manuel Jones, Gale, 1998. The Healing. Boston, Beacon Press. ISBN 978-0-8070-6314-9. The protagonist of this novel describes her ongoing daily experiences in the U.S. using a consistently Afrocentric perspective. Renoko Rashidi, author, Introduction to African Civilizations, The Global African Community, The African Presence in Asia, Australia, and the South Pacific J.A. Rogers, author, Sex and Race, Negro-Caucasian Mixing in All Ages and All Lands, The Old World, Nature Knows No Color Line, Sex and Race, A History of White, Negro, and Indian Miscegenation in the Two Americas, The New World, 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro with Complete Proof, A Shortcut to the World History of the Negro Ivan Van Sertima, author, They Came Before Columbus, The African Presence in Ancient America, African Presence in Early Europe ISBN 0-88738-664 
4, 4 Blacks in Science Ancient and Modern, African Presence in Early Asia, African Presence in Early America, Early America Revisited, Egypt Revisited, Journal of African Civilizations, Nile Valley Civilizations, Egypt, Child of Africa, Journal of African Civilizations, V12, The Golden Age of the Moor, Journal of African Civilizations, Volume 11, Fall 1991, Great Black Leaders, Ancient and Modern, Great African Thinkers, Sheikh Anta Diop Chancellor Williams, Author, The Destruction of Black Civilization, Great Issues of a Race from 4500 BC to 2000 AD. Teofile Obenga, Author, Ancient Egypt and Black Africa, A Student's Handbook for the Study of Ancient Egypt in Philosophy, Linguistics, and Gender Relations Asa Hilliard, 3, Author, SBA, The Reawakening of the African Mind, The Teachings of Patahotep Topic. Further reading Tunda Adelik, The Case Against Afrocentrism, ISBN 1604732938 Wilson Jeremiah Moses, Afrotopia, The Roots of African American Popular History Cambridge Studies in American Literature and Culture, ISBN 978-0521479417 equals equals see also